I'm Mike with SuccessTualChess.com and FindAMentor.com. Uh, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the two most important communication habits to avoid um, in uh, when you're having to correct somebody. Do you ever wonder why people go on the defensive after you've corrected them? Just sometimes people get angry or maybe uh, people freeze up when you're making suge suggestions to try to help them. It might be your opening statements or your corrective statements. There are two things that people do uh, that put people on the defensive. Uh, they make them freeze up or they, people get angry in response. Often we're not even aware uh, that we're doing these things, uh, especially if we've been brought up using the same techniques. Uh, are there times where you've ever felt unfairly judged? Um, if you've ever felt judged unfairly, Typically, one of two things is said to you. Either uh, somebody's given you a negative, uh, they've negatively uh, name-called you or labeled you in a negative way, or they've blamed you for something. The second thing is they've blamed you for something without effective or clear discovery and questions about your side of the story. Uh, they didn't approach your, your, uh, the situation with some compassion to find out what your side of the story was. If, if you're a leader, it's important to avoid these two communications habits, the negative labeling and negative name calling, and the blaming people without questioning or complete discovery. Uh, there was a situation with one of my clients once where uh, we were getting, uh, it was brought to the attention uh, with me that uh, one of our leaders, uh, one of our managers was belittling people. And we'd recently hired some, some new people that were very good and we were afraid that they were going to quit. So we brought the, uh, it was brought to my attention. Uh, we did a quick conference call with the uh, persons, uh, the managers, uh, boss themselves and decided how we were going to handle it. And uh, we decided that the, uh, the boss of the manager that we were getting the complaints for would deal with it uh, himself. But in that situation, what happened, we actually made a mistake. The, the manager uh, had the corrective conversation with, uh, with his uh, subordinate, the, uh, the middle manager, and, but he did it without specifics. And so one big mistake we want you to avoid uh, when you have to correct somebody uh, about their behavior, uh, especially uh, when they're belittling people, uh, when you've got to correct a manager. Now, if you're an HR coordinator or a senior manager and you've got to correct a, uh, a middle manager, it's very important that um, you deal with specifics. In this situation, the senior manager didn't deal with specifics. He dealt with generalities. And what we find in every situation, pretty well every time that we deal with generalities, uh, it doesn't um, uh, it doesn't have a, a positive effect. Uh, people feel blamed. They don't have an idea. They deny. And there's, uh, it's very difficult to uh, coach the person on being better. And so uh, if somebody's complaining to you, as an HR professional and as, as a senior manager about a manager or a coworker that is belittling them or negatively name calling and labeling or blaming and, and creating negative energy. It's very important that you encourage the person that's having the complaint to uh, dig deep inside for courage and for something we call resilience. Resilience is the ability to bounce back after something as negative has happened to you and move on and uh, continue progressing. So it's important to offer to mediate and bring that person in and deal with specific situations. If you're not dealing with specific and real situations, then um, the chances of getting uh, the uh, productive outcome is much less. Having said that, if you're the leader, uh, it's important to avoid these two communications habits of negative name, labeling, name calling, and blaming people without proper questioning. So I'm going to give you some tips today so that you can avoid these practices. And one of the tips is to, uh, number one, ask people um, how your uh, corrective um, is working for them, uh, how your corrective uh, pr uh, processes are working. When somebody makes a mistake, and as a manager, people are going to make mistakes. We have to correct people. We have to drive people. Sometimes people get lazy, and we want to drive them to succeed. Ask people how they want to be coached. That's, that's a really, really important tip. Now, sometimes they'll tell you how they want to be coached and you follow that method and it works 
And sometimes it doesn't work, even though you're telling what they've telling doing what they've asked you to do, and the way to correct them it doesn't work. So in that case, you fall back to these standard uh, five um, five steps. And the first step is when you've got to correct somebody as a leader, is to describe the situation in detail or the behavior in detail. Describe what you specifically witnessed, what you heard, what you saw. And once you describe that, say, ask them their side of the story. Okay, so uh, Joy, when you did this situation, what was it that triggered you to respond in that way? What did you witness? What, what did you hear or see that made you respond in this way? When you heard and saw that, what was your thought pattern? How did you feel? And what was your intention when you chose to act in that way? So find out that discovery before you give the corrective information. Get some information. Let them share their side of the story. When somebody asks you about what happened for you, what happens for you? Well, you feel like they care a little bit. Uh, when, when somebody asks me what happened for why I did something, I feel like they're at least giving me uh, the opportunity and respecting me enough to get my side of the story. So, so do that. Describe. Number one is describe the behavior or situation that you witnessed. Number two is ask them what happened for them. Number three is to use the shit sandwich to give your corrective feedback. Okay, Charlie, I understand why you did that. Now I want to say, uh, Charlie, that you do a really good job. You're here on time every day. You're a good team member. We really appreciate that. But when you did this situation, it wasn't appropriate. And we need you to do it differently. So here's what I want you to do in that situation. And then you finish the challenge off by saying, you know, Charlie, we really appreciate your attention to detail and the quality of your work most of the time. So keep up the good work. Just work on this little situation. So a shit sandwich is good stuff, bad stuff, and then more good stuff. Now, uh, the, that, that, that's the third step. First step, describe the behavior in the situation you witnessed or heard about. Ask them their opinion. Then give them your shit sandwich. The next step, the fourth step, is to give them a tool to help them prevent from making that mistake a second time or a tool to help them uh, change their behavior or their situation or their circumstance. Give them a tool. Ask them what kind of support they need so they can prevent this situation from happening again and provide them with that support. So give them the tools to help them succeed. As a leader, that's one of your jobs. And the fifth step in this process is to follow up with positive affirmation. When somebody says to you, good job, Joe, uh, you did a great job on that. Really appreciate that. Thank you for your effort. How do you feel? You feel appreciated. And you feel like working harder for that person. Show some appreciation. When somebody says to you, boy, you're a positive person. Joe, you, you, you went through that challenge really well. How do you feel? You feel inspired to work harder. One of the rules of keeping the team motivated after corrective uh, uh, situations is to find five or six positive things that they do in the next two or three days and pat them on the back and show them appreciation, thank them for a job well done and the things that they're doing well. And when you do that, it inspires them to implement that corrective procedure that you've given them in the step, uh, in the third uh, step of this process or third or fourth step, third and fourth step. When you feel appreciated, do you work harder? Yes, you do. When you feel supported, do you feel like working harder? Of course you do. When, as a leader, when you give strong support, people will support you as a leader. And the support goes both ways. But you don't get the support from your team until you give them the support that they need to succeed. I'm going to give you a couple more quick tips today about getting your teams going. First of all, when somebody is making the same mistake over and over and over, and it doesn't, nothing that you do seems to correct, and you've asked them, what do you need? Uh, what do you need from me to help you get through this problem? And you do that, and it still doesn't get them through the problem. So if somebody's making continual mistakes, or the other situation is where a team member is bringing the rest of the team down, and there's just we've done everything that we can to change that, and it hasn't changed. The behavior hasn't changed. That's when it's time to get rid of that person. Your job as a leader is to make sure you surround yourself with a strong team. And there's times where there's individuals on your team that don't fit. And it, if you don't get rid of that person, it robs your team, yourself, of being 
the success that it can be. And it robs that individual that is causing the disruption, uh, the opportunity to go to a job where they're actually more effective or a job that fits better for them. So don't hesitate to get rid of that person that's continually making mistakes. You're robbing them of the opportunity to find a job that they can succeed at. And you're robbing yourself and your team of having a, a fully gelled, successful team. So don't hesitate to get rid of people. And, and the other last thing, I, I want to go back to this resilience uh, topic that I talked about at the beginning. It's important that people develop some resilience. And without resilience, we can't succeed in life. As a leader, if you move to your position, you've developed some resilience inside. So talk to your people about having resilience. You know, there's times as a leader where we really want to push our people. Sometimes we have to raise our voice a little bit. And sometimes we don't go through this whole effective communication process of exploring people's thoughts, feelings, senses, emotions, and intentions. Uh, sometimes we just got to say, get to work, get it done. It's time. We've got a deadline here to get it done. And you got to push people a little bit. That doesn't mean you use the negative labels or the negative names or anything like that. But it means you say with a stern voice and raised a little bit, it's time to get going and get some work. Just get it done. And that's okay once in a while. And then you want to, back to the resilience thing here, when you do that, you want people to say, you know, there's times where uh, negative things happen in our life. And I want you to develop some resilience. And the resilience is the ability, and you have this conversation, resilience is the ability to bounce back from negative situations. Whether uh, it's me getting on your case and you're feeling peeved off at me because I'm on your case too much, or it's because um, something negative has happened in your life. If you want to succeed in your life, it's important to develop that resilience to be able to bounce back. And I want you to have that. And so one of the tools that helps people build resilience is to, when negative situations happen, to have the courage to come and talk to the people that the negative situation happened with. So when I've done something inappropriate or I've made you feel lousy, the next day I want you to come and talk to me about that. And when you take the courage to come and talk to me about that and we resolve through the situation, your resilience builds. And so does mine. And we can help each other build resilience by doing that. So I'll apologize the next day if, if, I've, if I believe I've done something wrong, or we'll talk about it and I'll ask you what, you know, what you think is a better way to handle that. But have the courage to come and talk to me about those things and your resilience will build. I want you to be successful in your job. And sometimes when negative situations happen, you gotta push through, dig down, find your courage, Develop your resilience and bounce back and go at it and to have that conversation with people. They'll appreciate that conversation. So a quick uh, revamp of what we talked about today is the two things that uh, put people on the defensive that make them angry or that demotivate them that you want to avoid as a leader is avoid the negative labeling and the negative name calling. The other thing that you want to avoid is blaming people without proper discovery. And when you need to correct somebody, follow these five steps. Uh, number one, uh, describe the behavior that you witnessed. Okay, be specific. Or the behavior that you heard about. Number two, ask them about their side of the story. Find out what their thought process is, what their intention was for that action that they made that you witnessed or that behavior that you witnessed that you want to correct. Number three, is to use your shit sandwich to give them the correction. Give them the positive things that they do. Tell them the positive things that they do on time every day, so on and so forth. Uh, but you made this mistake, you need to correct this behavior or this uh, type of reaction to this negative situation and then back it up with more positive information. And number four is give them tools that they need to succeed. Ask them, what do I need to work with you on to help you not make this mistake or help you stop this behavior. And then give them those tools. And number five is back up that corrective conversation over the next two or three days with lots of positive affirmation, pats on the back, or thank yous in appreciation for the work that they've done a good job at. And the standard rule is five or six positives to every negative corrective mistake. And when you do that, your team will feel supported and they will give you support back. 
uh, the last couple tips that I gave you today was um, don't be afraid to move somebody off the team that's not gelling with the team or that is showing that they're not able to correct their mistakes or making the same mistake over and over. When you don't get rid of them, you rob them of the opportunity to succeed in another job and you rob you and your team of the ability to achieve everything that they can achieve. And the last tip that I gave you today was help your people build resilience. When you help them build resilience by just having the conversation about what resilience is and giving them a couple of tips for how to push through those negative situations, which helps build their resilience, to come to you when they think that they've been treated unfairly and have the direct conversation, that builds their resilience and your resilience. And resilience is one of the most important tools that we need if we want to succeed at all areas of life. The ability to bounce back. Negative things happen to all of us. The ability to bounce back with resilience is what helps us succeed to the next level. Uh, we're going to do a whole series on uh, using the contact communication system uh, to build resilience and to communicate effectively over the next few weeks. So join me, uh, continue to join me for the uh, contact uh, or this Help Me Communicate uh, video series. Remember at SuccessToolChest.com, all of our uh, live videos are posted at the Success Tools blog. We've now done 22 of these uh, Help Me Communicate um, video sessions. They're all at Success Tool Chest. Uh, don't forget to download your free HIP Interactive uh, Effective Communications Awareness Tool. Uh, the, hu the HIP, the Human Interaction Process Tool, is one of the most important tools that you need to know about uh, to help you succeed in communicating on in any uh, difficult situation in life. The HIP, the Human Interaction Process, is how people communicate. When we understand how people communicate, we are become better communicators. So download the HIP uh, free uh, effective awareness communications tool at successtoolchest.com. Don't forget to like here our, our Facebook page and like our blog post at Success Tool Chest. Tell your friends. Um, we're here to help you become a better communicator. I hope you enjoyed today's session. You go out and make it an awesome day and we'll see you next week for Help Me Communicate. Bye for now.